Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to Titled Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month. It is Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. This tournament is starting any moment now. 399 players in. I think that's by far the most players I've ever seen in a Titled Tuesday. I see Alexander Grishuk right at the top of the list, along with some other very strong players around the 3,000s. Greetings to everyone watching live on Twitch. And we are off. Let me close this board. Okay. So playing B versus N in the first game. Um, let's not let's not board up quite yet. <laughs> we won't play an exchange love for now. Hey Zizumas. Hello to you. Um, let's play. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna take. This is a straightforward line I recommend on Chessable. Yeah, thank you, Zizumas. Uh, knight a6, interesting move. Okay, let's just play a3. Helpful, control the b4 square. Put the bishop on g5, e3, bishop d3. Try to obtain a queen's gambit decline-like position. So if you don't know the format of this tournament, it is 10 rounds, 3 plus 2 blitz. I try to aim for a positive score always in this tournament. Like, that's a pretty good goal. It's a tough one. All right, so I think he's probably going to play bishop f5. Okay, no. The knight's coming to c7 instead. I'm a little tempted to go here and try to mess with black's development, but I think it's better just to seize this diagonal and, and take control of the f5 square. Okay, now I may play it, although it does run into uh, knight g4 if I play that. So let's pull back here. I think black is going to go for this plan. Yeah, and bishop f5 later. Fair enough. All right, let's castle. Hey, Attic C. Hey, Sola Fide Chess. Um, let's just get on with the minority attack. take thinking just take again and maybe go ahead and play b5 after this all right terminal thank you for subscribing five months in a row yeah b5 black hasn't castled yet so black's gonna have to waste a little bit of time thanks aruna and eschner thank you for subscribing nine months for eschner uh, let's take. All right, so we've created this this typical weakness here. Now, how best to go about attacking it? Because I think black wants to put this queen on a5. Probably this is prudent. Restrain and then later try to destroy. That's usually the operation. Rook c1 or knight e5. Let's play rook c1 first. My opponent's playing pretty fast, but I like my position. This looks quite comfortable to me. Queen a6 was another good option there, but just all hands on deck to attack this weakness. Hey, Axiom Fox. Yeah, queen a6 looks really comfy. I use this rook to go to c1 so that this one remains protecting a3. And Chessy Bus, thank you for subscribing 11 months in a row. You guys are scaring me in the chat, and you said, This is not John. <laughs> Multiple people said that. Is it just because I have my hair down today? I did stream yesterday for Arena Kings. And uh, I had I had the battle tips up, as someone once said in the in the YouTube comments. I'm just keeping it casual today. You know, no no hair wax, nothing. Wow, and black's just going to give me c6. Thing is, I don't have to take it right away. I think black's going to try to sink the knight in here, but I think knight e5. Yeah, let's, let's not be in a hurry to take. Maybe I can take with the knight and also deny black this square. All right, and the subs are coming in fast here. Felix Chess 5, 10 months, and also C Herrera 96, 3 months. 
Says John is looking good today. More delis delicious than a freshly baked pizza. <laughs> a lovely cheese pizza. Thanks, Evil Crash. Cloclo, I don't know why that's it. That is. Um, that's interesting that that happened, though. Okay, Bishop G5. So how best to harvest this pawn? I think take with Rook. If I take with the Knight, maybe Queen F6. But then I could pivot back to E5 even. That looks pretty nice. Maybe I should take with the Knight. Yeah, let's take with the Knight. Yeah, Queen F6, and now I think just come back here. Just making sure I'm not running afoul of any tactics, because the Queens are in opposition with each other here, with only the Knight in between. Uh, but I like that I'm threatening Knight E7 here. Yeah, I don't see any fancy tactics that Black can pull. Okay, so Black just goes back. Mm-hmm. I want to go after this guy. Um, I should definitely watch my time a little bit. Let's go here. Seems awkward for Black to defend if Queen E6, maybe Rook C6. Trying to get started on the right foot here. Jesse Bus, thanks for the 199 bits. Yeah, I, mean, I think Queen E6 is probably the best move, but it's not it's not a pleasant move to have to play. Maybe Queen F5 now? Queen F5 to try to Yeah, Queen F5 is a bit annoying. Okay. Yeah, that is a crafty resource. Okay, I'm going to come back. Now perhaps f3. Okay, f4 is possible. Ah, g4. What about g4? Queen is like trapped, strangely. Almost in the center of the board. Yeah, black had to sack that. Okay, let's take. And now. Let's just go here. Bring this back. This is covered, so no big deal. Drop the g4 pawn, that was probably not wise. Okay, but I might get a trade in at least. All right, this is, this is winning. Should be winning without issue now. Mm, let's check. Go here, looking for a mating net. Threatening made in two. Yeah, those knights around the king are pretty tough to deal with. All right. Yeah, I think g4 was a key find because I'm up a pawn here, but black has some compensation in the form of an attack against e3, uh, maybe rook b8 could be a, a possible idea, I'm trying to go rook b1. So g4 was important, and yeah, surprisingly the queen is trapped. Uh, black can sack the piece as they did in the game and try to 
get something for it. You know, the move I was concerned about, though, I'm not sure. Oh, King F2 is an awful move. Wow. <laughs> Did anyone else notice that? I certainly didn't. <laughs> I was going to say the move I was worried about was F5. Yeah, King F2 is straight awful. Uh, Longreef, thank you for subscribing nine months in a row. I, I got to go back and look at the chat and see if anyone noticed Bishop H4. It happened pretty fast. I don't see anyone saying Bishop H4, so maybe you guys missed it too. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have taken with the knight. I'm not sure. I mean, here, I can play rook c3. I just didn't want to have to make uh, some sort of retreating move. And this is not complete, not clear at all, actually. f6, because the knight is defending that. Yeah, I, I think I definitely should have taken with the knight on g4. Either that, or I should throw in h4 first. If I play h4 and attack the bishop here, then g4, that looks cleaner because, you know, just as an example in this same line, here I have the option of g5 to block the bishop. So, all right. Well... I was playing well up until that that mishap with King F2, but got the win. So very strong title Tuesday in store, guys. 408 players. Oh, I see MVL in the mix here. Indian Lad, who I think it was the winner of the previous title Tuesday. Uh, that is not Anand. Uh, Indian Lad, that is. Someone was speculating last time that it was Anand. It's an Indian player. I think it's Srinivasan. Is that right? I, I can't remember. There's a number of very strong young Indian grandmasters. Um, who else? Who else do we have here? Big fish. I think that's Fedoseyev. Parhamov. Yep, he's always always strong. And there's so many good players in the mix. I don't see Hikaru today. Do not see him. Hammer. There's Hammer, another streamer. Hey, John Muriart. Let's take a look at a game while we wait here. Oops. Uh, Rook and Bishop versus Rook. A classic title Tuesday end game. <laughs> Is there a place we can see the standings? You'll probably have to go on live chess in order to do that and navigate to Title Tuesday. Hello to Belgian Novice. Thank you for subscribing. Greetings, Belgian. 10 months. Yes, hello. Oh, Chessy Bus. Three out of four in your latest tournament, plus 61 USCF rating points. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. That's a strong performance. And by the way, just a piece of advice for you guys. I know many of you play tournaments or have even just started playing tournaments. I think if possible, it makes sense to play up one rating section. So let's say your rating is, I don't know, 1100 and you're eligible for an under 1200 section. I'd actually try to play an under 1400 section if you could, if you want to challenge yourself. It's nice for improvement purposes to play someone, you know, on average better than you, but someone you're still capable of beating if you play well. Uh, and also for rating purposes, you know, even though the rating shouldn't be your focus, uh, when you're playing up 100, 200 rating points, you just, you don't need to score as much in order to break even or gain points. So it takes a little bit of that pressure off of you. And again, uh, ideal for improvement purposes. So just something to keep in mind for you guys. Uh, Evil Crash, thanks for the subscription. Two months says win big. I will try. Thank you. Yes, this is a draw. However, uh, I think Black just lost. Black might have been losing prior to that. Yeah. Wow, okay, so Kovalenko gets the job done. But yeah, Rook and Bishop versus Rook is a theoretical draw. Not easy to hold, especially if you're unfamiliar with the technique. Uh, actually, this is dangerous for Black. Let me try to see where... Okay, here, I think Black should have gone directly back with the king. King to... Uh, D1 would have been best. We're looking at it from White's point of view. So king to D1. Okay, playing Grandmaster Konovets. This is uh, Samuel Sevian. Okay, I played him OTB. I played him OTB almost exactly a year ago, actually. 
Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to develop as normal against this. Let's play knight f3. Hairless Italian, one year. Thanks for the subscription. A 12-month streak. Awesome. Okay, just going to play bishop f4. And I'm going to play h3. This seems kind of ultra-cautious, but London system idea. Uh, just trying to tuck the bishop away if ever knight h5 happens. In fact, let's preemptively tuck this away because it feels like black's probably going to go for uh, e5 or some sort of pawn break. Okay, let's play the rook here. Try to play fast. My opponent certainly is. He's adopting a, a hedgehog-like structure. Looking for some opportunity to play c5. It may not present itself, though. I think knight d2. I might just play for bishop f3. This is a pretty strong piece. Certainly stronger than my light square bishop. So let's see what he does. Is he going to play c6 and try to get virtually every pawn on the 6th rank? Nope. Not now, at least. Okay, let's play c5. So now I do have to be mindful of an e5 break. Black can try that. And black indeed does go for it. That said, I, I think my position's still pretty decent here. Uh, maybe knight b3 e4, I'll pull the bishop back to e2. Try to probe on the queen side. Samuel Sevian, my opponent here, one of the top young grandmasters from the U.S. He's probably 18 years old now. 17, 18. Zizuma says, Hikaru is a bit under the weather and flying out very, very early from Europe. Okay. Thanks, Kalida Rush. Yeah, see you, Chessy Bus. I'm uh, double fisting the coffee and the tea today, guys. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for the next two hours. Wow, taking on C five. That is not a move I expected. I'm going to take with a pawn. Because uh, I want to I want to try to get this knight to a5 if possible. Try to squeeze black on the queen side. The t Fran, thank you for subscribing. Seven months. That's a really odd move in my opinion. Because I would think you wouldn't want to open the queen side. Just seems to give me this square for free. And the file. But there's a reason he's 2,600 plus feet A and I'm not. So we'll f see what he has in mind. He takes. Okay. Just recapture. Keep the good structure. And knight into the center. Mm -hmm. If bishop a8, can I play c6 and try to go after this? I guess there's knight b6 in that case. So it may not be worth the weakening. I'm thinking perhaps just rook e1. Ah, that drops d4 though. Okay. I'd like to target this pawn if possible. Hmm. Queen d3, maybe? Queen d3 makes sense. Let's just play that. Target this. Maybe try to prepare this move when d4 is protected. Queen g5. Hmm. OK, 
Okay, now what about C6 now? Ah, this knight on A5 is going to be a liability in the end. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, man. My reminder to restart my computer just popped up. <laughs> Good timing. Okay, let's play knight e2. I gotta move faster now, clearly. Looking for some bishop f4 ideas, also maybe this. Okay. Hmm. Let's go here. He's on the prowl. Okay, I'm going to sack the exchange for simplicity's sake. Oh, he doesn't take the exchange, though. Interesting. Ah, you can do that one. E, I didn't see that. Okay. Well, can still scramble for some counterplay here. Okay, let's pull this back. Penetrate. Hmm. Okay, I'm trying my best to keep control here. Just push this guy, I guess. Continue pushing. What? <laughs> okay, let's take that. Man, he's just playing instantly. This is this is tough to deal with. Okay, queen takes should probably be good here. Don't see a mate quite yet. Ah, Queen G1. Is checkmate. Yeah. He just started blitzing me and playing really well. <laughs> this is the 7-up kid, yes. It is, Timoko. It is the 7-up kid. Yeah, this was tricky. And I just didn't manage to figure out the complications. Probably spent too long right around here. Because surprisingly, the A5 knight like has problems. Yes, the mate was coming. The mate eventually came. Okay, because here I wanted to try to undermine this whole construction, right? Play c6, attack the knight. He goes knight b6. And then take here. Like, this would be nice. But the thing is, he takes the knight at the end. So, that foiled that plan. I'm really not sure what to play in this position. I played knight e2 and tried to maneuver a bit. Knight f4. I was trying to get him to play g5 so I could trap his queen, but that didn't happen. Mr. Magic, thank you for subscribing. Says, good luck, John. Thank you, Mr. Magic. I mean, even, even right around here, this position looks pretty good. Knight g6, knight f8. I went for a6. Maybe there's some better way to play it, like uh, in hindsight, perhaps this move. Because if ever I play c6, it's almost like this bishop is uh, a dead piece provided I can keep my pawn on c6. So then I'd be threatening knight takes d5. Yeah, it feels like white's better here, but no guarantees. No guarantees. Belgian novice, thanks for the thousand bits. Let's watch Grishuk. Grishuk 1. 
Okay, uh, what about... What about Polish fighter? This is Duda, Jan Krzysztof Duda. He won. Oh, big fish went down. To incognito knight. Parhamov. Parhamov won. Thanks, Moke. Appreciate you cheering me on from work. Uh, Mubot is broken, apparently. We've had some issues with Mubot lately. And Texwine, thank you for subscribing. This is good luck, John. Thank you. Yeah, five months in a row from Texwine. I uh, also wanted to say, for those of you watching this later in the future on YouTube, I know I haven't posted for a few weeks. I've just been taking a little break. I was actually sick for about a week. I wasn't really doing any recording or streaming. Um, had a lingering cold that was affecting my voice a lot, but it was also just taking a break. I think it's good to take a break and recharge every once in a while. It's uh, probably not good for your your mental health to just be constantly pumping out content. <laughs> Not that I ever feel like overwhelmed necessarily, but I just think in anything, it makes sense to take a slight break every once in a while. Did have a very busy January. Lots of exciting stuff happening. So don't be alarmed if I ever go for, you know, a week, two weeks, even a month without posting. I know my YouTube content let me try to get a game up so you guys aren't just staring at this. I know the frequency of my posting has gone down over the years. But that might be partly due to the the very high bar I kind of set for myself early on in YouTube. So I've mentioned this before, but when I first started posting on YouTube in, I believe it was 2014, I was posting three videos every day. Three videos a day. Uh, a bullet video, a blitz video, and a standard video. Just, and I don't know how many months I did that, but that definitely added up to a lot of uploads. And I really enjoyed it, definitely. But that, of course, is not really a sustainable schedule. So nowadays, I try to post when I'm feeling inspired. I don't want to post just to post something. So breaks are necessary. Okay, Karina Ivanova won. And is this the last game of the round? This game was just drawn. All right, so round three coming up. <laughs> HM Tone remembers. Uh, sorry that these keep popping up and I have to close them each time. Okay, Kumi 29. Let's play D4, D5. A London system. Let's play C5. <laughs> Bell's a sub is still waiting for chess fundamentals. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yes. Okay, bishop d3. Let's play bishop g4. I like this approach against the London when I play it from the black side. It's pretty straightforward. Just play c5 and try to take on d4 as early as possible. Uh, let's play bishop g6. Let's just see if I can force a resolution uh, with the bishops right now. If, if white takes, perhaps I can delay or completely avoid castling kingside in order to generate an attack. Kalita says, let's go for 2500 elo, John. Yeah, you mean FIDE rating? That would be a tall order. Um, not opposed to it, but you know. Okay, let's let's take, and I'm gonna play Queen D6, I think. Let's see how White reacts to that. Maybe Queen G3, but that kind of puts their queen on arguably a slightly awkward square. Now I could play Knight E7. Knight e7, looking for knight f5. Just checking to see that there's no discoveries that can hurt me here. White does have knight h5 to try to force a queen trade. 
But I think I'd be happy with that because the knight would end up going back to g3, which is probably a bad square for it. And I keep open the option of castling queenside if I want. Or I could do the minority attack later. But yeah, I'm gunning for this square. I think white has to move the knight now, actually. Otherwise, knight f5. Unless they want to mess around with knight f5, queen here. Okay, knight d3. Mm -hmm. All right, considering taking... Also considering just queen to a6 or something. Taking knight f5 and then g4. Eh, I'm not sure that trade really benefits me. Let's play knight f5. I'm going to try to force a trade where my knight gets to d6, which is a pretty nice square. And Eschner gifted the sub to Mr. King 26 for four gifted subs on my channel. Thanks, Eschner. Enjoy the subscription, Mr. King. Okay, let's castle. This middle game is looking pretty balanced, I'd say. Nothing really happened over here, but just a position that either side can can hope to outplay their opponent in. I'm going to try to focus on the queen side. I'm still playing around with the minority attack idea. Let's play knight d7. I'll go for b5. Let's do it. I just wanted to play knight d7 first just to make sure that white can't jump in here. Okay, and he's going to try to jump in with the other knight. Maybe this. Idea a5, a4. And even a3, if allowed. Okay. It's hard to say who this benefits. I mean, I'm, I'm arguably creating weaknesses for myself by playing b5, but... Okay, interesting. Now b4 looks quite thematic because if there's a double trade i'm going to play rook c4 and i'm going to attack that weak structure that white has or rook a4 i could even play rook c2 i don't like because he can block the check easily um which is better probably probably this one This is all solid. I'm not worried about this or really anything white's doing on the king side. My pawn structure is way too solid for white to get through anytime soon. So I'm hoping to take, play rook a2, win this pawn. Hey, chess bay. How are you doing? Do I play the polar vortex? Is that like the polar bear opening? <laughs> Is that where you just hunker down and you play your pawns up one square, kind of like the hippo, and you just try to stay as compact and warm as possible? Okay, this this is awesome now. Um, I'd like to win d4 outright, but I need to deal with this knight first. Considering knight d6, knight d6 looks good. Yeah, I don't really need to trade knights. Definitely feels like something should drop off here for white. One of these two pawns at minimum. Rook a2, knight b5, or knight f5. All ideas. If the rook comes to d2, there's uh, knight c4 as well. Okay, and if b3, I can trade and play knight here, and I think that wins the d-pawn. And if this rook goes to d2, knight c4, probably? Yeah. Hmm. 
I'm surprised he's just gonna give me that. Okay. Gimme, give gimme. Give Let's attack the weakness. He's going for check and then knight d7, probably, to set up knight f8, but it feels like it should fail. Make a way for my king to come here, and I'm threatening this and this. Okay, check. Because now he has to go to the second rank. Yeah, let's just take. I'm going to go check, and then I'm going to put the knight on g6. Because that stops knight f8. That looks very solid. Push this pawn. Let's give a check here. Take. Hmm. Man, did I mess this up? I'm... Oh, man. Wow. That was very frustrating. <laughs> Might still be okay. I mean, from a counterplay standpoint, but I definitely messed that up. Wow. Very, very frustrating. Maybe still winning this? Probably not. Just like an ounce of counterplay that White had, and I blew that. Okay, it's still, still possible to try something here. Check. Nah, white can take, yeah. Oh, I can't believe I messed that up. Ugh. Man. Is there really no escape after that? Check here and this. This is amazing. How do I get out of this? So white's threatening check with the knight? Or take here. King back and then check. And they're covering these squares. You know what's funny? Like I saw this idea when I played knight takes f4, but I just didn't think it would work. <laughs> I just thought there's no way that this could possibly work. And actually what I was worried about most here is if white plays knight d7. Does knight d7 actually win for white? Because I escape the check then here, and then that would even be worse. Knight d3. Let's see. Knight d3. Okay, but let's just say white plays something like this. What does that change? Unless I can check in knight f4 or something, but... If I play f6... Then I have to reckon with g6, although then I could I could sacrifice my knight. Yeah, I think I should have just not taken on f4. Just almost anything else would have been, been winning here. Like rook b7, for instance, would have been pretty straightforward. 
go attack the knight. So you're saying knight d3 here and then try what I did in the game? But I'm not even sure this g6 idea is good, guys, because if this happens, I'm getting mated. He went for my knight in the game, but he actually could have done this instead. I have some checks here, but it seems like they're running out. Yeah, I don't know. That's baffling. That's just uh, one of those unfortunate situations. <laughs> okay. Uh, Grishuk 1 looks like a very powerful performance here. All right, see you, Long Grief. <laughs> Says, I have to go to bed. Hope I don't get nightmares. Yeah, F6 is clearly better than G6. I, I agree, Kanapka. Yeah, knight takes F4. Too greedy. Too, too greedy. Gave white their only little bit of counterplay. Uh, let's see who's on a perfect score so far. How many players? Standing still updating. This seems to be the last game of the round. Don Cappuccino versus Mike Saylor. Oh, I know Mike Saylor. He's from one of the Dakotas. North Dakota, I think. There's not too many strong chess players in North Dakota, but he's one of them. All right. Sergey Kim is next, d4. Let's try to erase that previous game from our memories, our collective memories. Sergey Kim. I think I played this guy before in a same-ish. Okay, let's play rook c1. This essentially stops black from playing b5. Yeah, sidetracked owl. I uh, I won my first game, lost the second, drew the third. Okay, here this is interesting. Kind of tempted to go for g4 and attack. But it's probably better to play this. I've done this before. g3, bishop g2, and then castle. Yeah, let's just do this. If b5, I'll play b3. Keep things solid. Chess goals for 2019. You know, I don't have too many playing goals in 2019. Yeah, I only have one GM Norm tournament lined up right now, but I'm just not really in chess tournament mode at the moment. Okay, knight d1 looks decent. Could also try to trap that rook a3 maybe. a3 takes queen d3. But then there's knight b6. Eh, I'm not sure how that turns out, so let's prefer this instead. He could play queen a5 if he wants to try to... Okay, knight c4. He's really going after that pawn. Okay. What about never play f3? Sometimes you have to make exceptions. John Moriart, thanks for the 250 bits. Appreciate it. Yeah, eight and a half out of ten. That's what we're going for right now. <laughs> okay, so he's going to back off. Now I could play bishop d2. 
Bishop d2 is definitely interesting. Bishop d2, knight e3. I think I like that. Kind of a reorganizational idea. It doesn't really address f5, though, is the only thing. Yeah, let's still play it. Start trying to bring some pieces over this way. Queen a3 is interesting too. Let's do that. Maybe looking for bishop a5. Okay. Let's go here. Take the file if possible. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to take. Now a6 is hanging. Try to make some inroads on the queen side. I think I'm doing all right over here. Okay, queen c8. Now it feels like I can start wiggling in. Maybe rook here. Double attack. Yeah, I think queen c8 was a mistake. Feels that way, at least. Uh, okay, bishop h3, interesting. Because if I take, he can take, and I can't take c8 because he has queen h3. Or, sorry, knight takes c8, hitting my rook. So that's clever. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually pretty annoying. Do I have to play bishop? No, bishop h1 is awful. That gets mated. Knight d1? Knight d1 feels wrong. Ugh. Don't know what to play here. I really don't. All right, I'm going to take. Queen g4 immediately. OK. So let's capture. Highly unclear position. I'm kind of banking on him not getting through on the king side. Uh, bishop there. All right, take. I have two seconds left, man. <laughs> Ooh, rook f2, I feel like I'm going to get mated. Yeah, that was looking bad, though. Okay, he didn't do that. Maybe a mistake by him? I don't know what's going on now. He has a perpetual, at least. Check, check. These games, man. <laughs> These games. 
They're just wild. Feels like I'm very close to losing still, but maybe the worst is over. Check on f1, I have king h4. He might go for the draw now. I think I would if I were him at this point. Okay, draw. E. So these last couple games, I've allowed some counterplay that on the surface didn't seem to be there, but I guess I'm missing them. Yeah, this was weird, because this seemingly invited rook b6. But after bishop h3, the tactics don't really work in my favor. Because the main problem is, normally I would just take here. I mean, he might even have queen g4 against this as he played, but I also thought he would just take on g2. Because if I take, there's knight takes c8 and he's attacking the rook. I'm actually really not sure what to do after bishop h3. It's possible rook b6 was a mistake. Because that's the prime defender of my king. I'd love to keep that piece. Yeah, he was mating me, definitely. He had mate. Uh, where was it? Right here with rook f2. If I go to h1, it's check. And then mate on g2. Uh, going to g1 allows all sorts of discoveries. And mate in a few. So king h3 is probably what I would play, but then check here and checkmate. So that was something he had there. Uh, but you disagree. Thank you for subscribing seven months. This is glad to catch the stream. Yeah, glad to have you. Uh, also, Cash Mankey, thanks for the 50 bits. And NP10290. Subscribe with Twitch Prime. Someone was, was talking about taking the bishop. You could just take the bishop back with the king. Well, yes, I could. I think you're talking about this line. I could, right, since queen takes c8 runs into knight takes c8, but it's going to be similar problems. He's going to put the queen in on h3, and then I have massive issues dealing with this. And queen f1. So, yeah, I, I actually think rook b6, I don't see really a, a way to punish bishop h3. So I actually think that's a mistake. I need to exercise some caution here. Wow, all the subscriptions are coming in fast. Pawn Peddler, thank you for subscribing. And Orchinus, appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing. Someone said Simon is tied for first. That's pretty awesome. Yes, he is. Wow. He's on three out of three. I don't know how he did in his most recent game because this was round four. Let's see if we can find him. Yeah, he's he must be done already because I don't see him. Just take a look at the game here. Ooh, the old bishop and knight against king. Checkmate attempt. He won. Okay, so Simon's on four out of four. Nice. That's a great, great start to uh, Title Tuesday. I mean, four out of four in Title Tuesday is way different than, you know, four out of four in, like, Arena Kings, which is also good, but you're playing the top guys. <laughs> yes, F3 was theory in the opening, guys. That's the same-ish variation of the King's Indian. Okay, so white's going to try to mate black in this corner. It doesn't seem to me like white is really making a lot of progress here. This technique looks a little shaky. They're on move 98. Yeah, people are saying, wrong idea completely in the chat. I mean, there's 
<laughs> there's not a lot of upside to being in this situation if you're getting Bali A, because yes, you should know this, but I can totally understand it's pretty nerve wracking to to do this over the board. Okay, he's got the king confined to the right corner now. I think he's going to be able to do it. Yeah, it's checkmated too. All right, so he managed to do that. Well played by him. Proving the naysayers in the chat wrong. King a8, bishop c6. It's checkmate. Yeah, the way he got there was a little weird looking, but worked out for him in the end. This game is almost certainly going to be drawn. So I'm on two out of four so far. Is your motivation for OTB tourneys gone, John? I'm just not really in tournament mode right now. I'm still going to play a little bit. I'm actually playing in about a week and a half our state open tournament. It's a six-round tournament. But you just got to understand these, these Grandmaster Norm tournaments. They're very long and expensive. And aside from having the chance to score a Norm, there's almost no upside to playing them. Other than you know your personal enjoyment, so they're they're pretty hard to justify. And I gave them a pretty decent crack last year and at the beginning of or yeah, beginning of 2018, end of 2017, for about five six months. And was close on a couple occasions to a norm, but didn't get it. So I'm just not ready to take another plunge because I think if you if you want to push for GM, if you're in my shoes, then you got you got to go all in, and I'm just not really interested in um, putting all my other obligations and interests in chess really to the side for now. <laughs> Thanks, chess bra. He says play some more nice opens, John. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I like playing Reykjavik. Um, yeah, like strong open tournaments, but. It's a huge time commitment. Financial commitment, too. So there should be just one game left in this round, and here it is. What's going on here? Who's trying to win this? Presumably black, because black can promote now, but... I think black can promote, yeah. Now white's going to go for checks. Is this a draw? I think this is just a draw. <laughs> That's a very weird draw. If if queen e1, there's trade queens and knight f3. So yeah, <laughs> can't say I've ever seen a perpetual quite like that. But Okay, round five coming up. Good luck to Simon. Hope to see him on five out of five after this, this round. No jinxing though. Okay, I am risky decision. Is it harder to get norms now as opposed to 20 years ago? I don't know about that. I mean, I wasn't playing top-level chess 20, 20 years ago, so hard for me to comment personally. I think a GM norm's always been a, a very tough task. Play e3. Try to take it with a bishop. And I think I can take with the bishop here. So b5 I take, and he's pinned. So let's pull this back to e2. And on b5, I'm going to play queen d1. I think that's actually the proper square for the queen, and then knight d2 if he goes for c5 stuff. <laughs> Peter Guest. <laughs> Peter Guest says, have you ever thought about just getting the norms? Smiley face. <laughs> yeah. That seems to be the uh, the tenor of the questions here. Why don't you just do it? <laughs> 
Okay, thinking about a4. This is a useful undermining move in these situations. If he pushes, then I get the c4 square and possibly an easier attack against the a-pawn. Eschner. <laughs> two norms to go. Two, two, two. Nice. Okay, so he's trying to solve this by tactical means. That's interesting. So if I take twice, he has bishop takes f3. That's a clever defense. Okay, I'm just going to keep the tension for now. Play something helpful. Ah, bishop f4 might have been decent there to attack that. That's what I should have played. Bishop f4 would have won a pawn. I can still do it. Let's try it. Yeah, it still seems to check out. Mm, maybe I should have taken on e4 first. I don't know. This is probably fine, though. Just debating how I want to do this. If take, take, pawn takes. What's going on there? Not sure, but I'm looking a little weak, so I'm going to take this way. So I have to accept the isolated pawn, but it is an extra pawn. He'll probably move his knight now to one of these squares. He can take and then take d4. He can win the pawn back. Yeah, I definitely should have taken on e4 first. That would have been, I think, the stronger decision. But he's going to stick the knight on d5. That I wasn't really expecting. Is he looking for queen d5 business? I don't know. I'm not really sure. Yeah, he's probably trying to stick the queen on d5. Hmm. Debating what to do here, but I'm really drawing a blank, I gotta say. All right, I'm going to play this. Can't ponder for too long here. I'm trying to play bishop c4. It is not easy at all. Now is he going to take? Interesting. Okay, but I can take this way. And if he plays knight takes, I take here. He can take with a queen. But then I can play bishop c4 or... Maybe bishop a6. I don't know. Some weird tactics going on. He does take with the queen. Let's play bishop c4. Seems to me he has to trade queens. And I can try to get my rook into e to d7 next, is my thinking. Might have a little pressure here still. Ooh, and if the bishop moves, I have bishop d6. Alert. He might play bishop g5.
Okay, chances. Chances here. Time pressure approaching. I still like the bishops. Trying to push this B pawn with the help of the bishops. Hmm. I'm going to take and push. This looks a little tough for him with uh, bishop c5, always a possibility. This is perhaps falling. Uh -huh. well, is he going to go to e1 maybe? Nah, I don't know. Okay, let's bring this up. Hmm. It's bishop f4, I guess. Okay. It is admittedly hard to make progress here, but I'm going to try. Probably need to do this. Okay. Oh, did I have mate? <laughs> I think I missed that the first time around. <laughs> yeah, I missed it the first time around. <laughs> but he repeated into it. It's all right. <laughs> yep. I had it for two moves. Yeah, I had it even here. I didn't even need king g2. You're right. You're right, major winning. <laughs> All right. So, I get some some fortunate circumstances right there. Tom Walker, thank you for subscribing. Nine months. Yeah. I wasn't really making any good progress right around here when he got his bishop to d2. Maybe I should have pushed the B-pawn more aggressively. Like, maybe here I should just push. But then he gets behind, and I'd have to play Rook B7. I'm not sure about this, because the D-pawn could become dangerous. Malau, thank you for subscribing. Nine months. This is a great game, John. Nice to watch you live. Thank you. And Simon did get to five out of five. Whoa. Who did he just play? Definitely pulling hard for Simon. He just played Jospum. Okay. Yep, Jospum is a strong, strong grandmaster. I think that's um, Jorge Cori from Peru. So I'm sure Simon's stream is very hype right now. Yeah, messy game I just played. Um, as far as the conversion of it, <laughs> missing rook f6 a couple times. 
And it should be a draw after I give up the B pawn. I think black just needs to keep their king out of danger. APR 787, thanks for the 500 bits. Let's see what other games are left here in the round. Santo Blue. I'm going to be right back, guys. I'm going to run to the bathroom. Okay, good. This game hasn't started yet. We're on round six. So I'm on plus one. I have three points. Oh, this is drawn by stalemate at the end. That is nice. That is very nice. And Old Blues Man, thank you for subscribing. It says keep up the great content. Thank you. Okay, Astana is here. He's trying to win a pawn up endgame, but this is definitely a draw. Any other games of note? King and Rook versus King and Bishop. Let's watch this one. This is probably the most interesting of the three games remaining. Yeah, Rakesh, who is a chess.com employee. He's better here. He's queen end games. Definitely like white's chances here, but he's got to escape the perpetual. But the thing that's hindering black is black's king is in a pretty bad location, I think. White can try to force a queen trade at some moment. For example, if black were to check f3 there, then queen e4 would have won for white. So black really has his work cut out for him with, with such limited time in particular. Hey, John, what do you think of the art of chess combination? I haven't read that. Hey, fight calmly. Yeah, and again, if black checks there, there's queen c7. Queen c7. And white's going to be able to promote this pawn. But he's got to play fast. We got it just in time. Okay, and now Rakesh is going to win. Queen takes a4. All right, so let's take a look at the standings. Not updated yet, it looks like. Any interest in getting a regular job one day? I have no plans to stop doing chess. Maybe someday I'll shift my focus, but I do like being self-employed, like largely self-employed. It's worked out well for me. Um, is Astana still trying to win this? Yes, he is. They're on move 161, and that pawn has not moved from g3. <laughs> I don't think black is going to blow this, but 
I don't know, maybe both sides are being stubborn here. Okay, so black trades, and we're going to go into a drawn king and pawn endgame. <laughs> king King E7, might as well try it. Thanks, True Test. All right, Arter. High rated FM. Okay. Let's keep it up here. Halfway done with the tournament. Grishuk versus Simon. All right, give me an update, guys. Keep me updated. Okay, what line should I play? I'll play knight b6, this Sokolov variation. Knight e5 is the theoretical move here. I haven't played this line for a while, but it is interesting. Do you play e5 here? I always forget if it's e5 or something else. Or e6. I'm trying to remember, because I've had some games from um, the white side here. But it's been so long since I've played this variation. I think it's queen b6, actually. Queen b6 looking for e5. Yeah, I lost a bad game on the white side of this against an IM one time. And now this. Wild Goose Chess, thank you for subscribing. Appreciate it, my friend. Nine months. Twitch baby. Yeah, now knight takes, I think. Or is it queen takes? I'm going to go with knight takes because I can't quite recall. It looks weird to just not take this pawn, but... Yeah, this can present white with some serious difficulties if white is not careful. Uh, castles or rook d8? Well, that's castle. So I'm playing for the initiative, trying to get a rook over here. White is pretty weak on the dark squares. White can't, cannot castle because of all the discoveries, especially knight takes e4, which will win the queen. Castle's queenside. Okay. So now I'm thinking queen b4 followed by b5. Or just knight takes a4. Yeah, let's do that. Mm hmm. Interesting. So that tactically prevents me from taking on e4. Uh, an A4, rather. Rook D8, white can take it. Hmm. Okay. Let's play H5. I'm thinking about trying to prepare this. Yeah, I could definitely play Rook D8 here. Give up the two rooks for the queen. It looks kind of tricky for white to defend after that. Feels like I have a bit of an initiative. Let's try it. Unclear complications. Bishop a2, knight takes here. This bishop is a little bit buried. That's the only thing I don't like about this.
But we'll see. My queen will have a lot of targets, I think. Yeah, do I go for knight takes a4 right away, or should I try to play something like b5? I should probably take that. I think I will. Guessing king b1. Mm -hmm. Let's try to go here, and maybe this. My king is pretty safe for the time being. I don't know if that will always be the case. But for now, it feels pretty secure. Very interesting imbalance. Hmm. Think about queen e7. Or just queen here. Let's let's keep the tension a little bit. Attack this. Threaten a3. Fun position, sharp position. Let's take that guy. Why not? That seems like a miscue by him. I mean, he's trying to stop a3, but losing e5 is a pretty nasty pawn to lose, I think. I'm going to give him a4. I'm not going to worry about a4 too much. I'm going to try to take this. Yeah, okay. Go after h4 now. Take. Get the king out. F4, I can take it. Should be okay. Feels like it. Let's kick this out. Try to block his rook. I don't know about that last move, but we'll see. Feels like he's messing up now. H pawn's ready to run. Yeah, that's just winning material. Check and queen. No stalemates, I hope.
Now with A2 available, there should definitely not be a stalemate here. <laughs> Some clever attempts. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a fun line to play. Ah, uh, Simon lost. That's too bad. Grushuk is a tough pairing. But five out of six, still a very good score for Simon. So, yeah, that was a fun game. Um, I think once I won the e5 pawn, it started to turn in my favor pretty significantly. Because I just have so many ways I can target him here with the queen, both sides of the board. The bishop is becoming more relevant. H4 and G2 were weak. So, yeah, I'm sure the technique was not perfect. It seems like he kind of panicked after F4. I wasn't actually sure what I was going to play next here. Because if I play H3, he will have check then. So I might need some sort of temporizing move to help here, but it's also very tough for white to find a move. Nicholas, thanks for subscribing 12 months. Says, somehow I'm also on 4 out of 6. Go easy on me if we get paired. <laughs> Alright. I look forward to it. I had bishop takes e4 at one point. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I was looking at that tactic. Like, not here. I'm not sure where I had bishop takes e4, but I think I had this pretty under control for the most part. Hey, Gold Dust Story. Good to see you in here. Um, can we check out Simon's game? Let's play through it. He played the French. Oh, and he sent Harry down the board. <laughs> you know the people like that. This looks like a great position for Black. I wouldn't mind playing this. Okay. So d4 is hard to hold in the long run, I guess, here. b5, develop the bishop. Yeah, now white's probably just better up the pawn. Yeah. And here's where the h pawn kind of hurts you because you don't have a lot of king safety. But all right, he, he put up a good fight and still having a great tournament. Let's see who else is at the top of the standings here. Put up a game. Let's put up Iturizaga's game. Another queen end game. Iturizaga trying to hold. Down two pawns. You guys really wanted me to play bishop takes e4. <laughs> like two or three people are saying this. I mean, I could I could sacrifice the bishop, but I didn't see in just my quick playthrough there where I where that would have been good. If you guys can give me a move number, maybe I can check it out. But ah, and Black forced the queen trade here. It looks like the standings are being a bit slow. It'd be nice to see these live standings. Here's the last game of the round. Rook and knight against rook. Offerall says Stockfish has given me an evaluation of 0.0, .0 after two rooks to the queen trade, but in reality you destroyed him. I think it's one of those positions where, yeah, I'm not surprised that the computer says it's equal, but I would rather be black in practice. I think it's easier with the queen there to create threats. White's king is a little weaker. White has a three versus one. I think it's imperative that white keep the e5 pawn. If they're going to do some damage there. Maybe White should have played e6 even. And try to trade and like threaten bishop g8 or bishop f5 in some situation.
Don't forget the rule of chess. Never play bishop takes e4. Yes, Jake. Agreed. Okay, so this is an important game for the standings. This IM versus FM game, because they're both on four and a half. So they can, you know, either get to five or if black wins, get to five and a half, which is a fantastic score. Why didn't I go king h7 before rook d8? Um, that's a good question. I could have, couldn't I? Yeah, he can move his bishop away if I do that, I guess. Bishop a2 or something. But yeah, I could have tried king h7. You're right about that f8, b9. And Papa pop off. thank you for subscribing with Twitch Prime. Yes, this is a draw. This is an easier draw in theory to hold than king and bishop and rook against king. But people have lost this endgame before. Is black going to try king c2? I would try king c2. Why not? Why not go forward here and threaten that? Because then if check, you can block with the knight. I guess he's still going to escape that way, but seemed like a better attempt. Okay. Shant Sargissian. This guy's the real deal. Played him before. All right. You guys know what time it is. Hey, RPG. Let's play the queen a5 version. Yeah, I've got my t as well. Good eye. I think Sargassian's going to play some theory against me. Maybe not. Okay, what do I do here? I think I play this move. Bishop d2, that's not a very common approach. Yeah, thanks guys. Love to see those Team Scandi emotes in the chat. Uh, take. And then knight d7 when he takes. Try to target this. Looks weird to leave your queen in the line of fire of this bishop, but white has to have some pretty good discovery in order to hurt you here. Uh, h5 would be a common move. Dare I take this pawn on c2? That can get you in trouble. <laughs> Probably not wise. Let's just play this. Just discourage this. Castle's queen side. Mm -hmm. Ah, but is that is that a blunder? That looks like a blunderino. Do I throw in knight c5 first before taking? Nah, we can make that determination later. Okay. Let's pull back here. Just for safety. Knight c5 now. Let's do it. Can take, take, and push f5. That's, I think, a likely continuation, actually. No. Queen e4. Hmm. All right, let's take. Now the question is, do I try to stop f5? Or do I just continue with developments? Like castles, f5. f5 is, is kind of annoying, though. So I think it's probably worth trying to stop. And if he... Yeah. If he does that, I was going to say rook d8. I <laughs> need a blunderino emoji. Well, someone made me laugh recently because they said I was the Ned Flanders of chess. It was on um, Eric Rosen's video from the Chessable event that we had in November.
Okay, queen a5 or... Just bishop e7 or something, maybe h4 even. I don't want to think too long here, but... I really want to trade dark square bishops. I'm going to play this, though. It's not simple to trade dark square bishops here. I'm thinking maybe in the future this. I don't know about this move. Possibly just weakening, but we'll find out. Okay, I'm going to try this. I, I'm wondering if he can take. I don't think he can, actually. I think I can dance away if he does that. But I'm looking for this. I know, guys, my time management, right? <laughs> That's why we have the sweating clock emote. I mean, bishop c5 is coming. Like, he's probably calculating the consequences of this. It's not simple to ascertain. But I'm thinking here, here, here. If he checks, I play king here. And I'm going to be able to get to b8. Those are my rough calculations. Is he going to play bishop d2, really? That seems wrong. Bishop d2, I might come in here. Yeah, why not? Let's attack. Hmm. This looks good. That's a tough threat to stop, actually. Bishop, he could play bishop d3. But bishop d3, I can take here. If he takes with the king, I take here. This He's on the run. He's down a couple pawns. Yeah, I think that's a good exchange sack to make because I get two pawns for it. He's going to have a very, very open king. Okay. This is looking good, guys. Let's just keep keep it going a little bit. But yeah, he has almost no counterplay here, too. This is the big problem. Okay, just take, check. I'll take here. Just take. <laughs> Let's play c5. Get the pawns on safe squares. Check. Bring the king over. Now that he can't get through at all, all my pawns are on safe dark squares. Let's check again. Oh, 
All right. Frank to the J, thanks for subscribing with Twitch Prime. There we go. The Scandy Strikes. Yeah, I thought... You know, right around here is probably critical. I think Queen A5 turned out to be a pretty good move. Because the key is if I can trade the Dark Square Bishops. If I can trade the DSBs, I'm really good here. And it's hard for him to stop after Queen A5. I know he wanted to play this move. This is sort of the, the key idea. And I am Rosen. Thank you for raiding with a party of 88. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. So this is a critical line. But I think my king squirts over here to safety. And I calculated check here, check here, and the queen holds the rook. I mean, he's got a bevy of pawns, but probably not enough. Uh, Mr. King asks, g4, f5 working for him? That's a good question, too. He could try that. Because he never got his counterplay going with the pawns. So take... Uh, yeah, this position. He plays g4 here. Now, funnily, funnily enough here, he can't take my bishop because I play check and I have this puzzle rush mating tactic. So he can keep barreling forward, though. Yeah, that's probably critical. Bishop here and then f5. Like, what happens in the case of this? It seems like there's probably concrete issues with this, though. Let's say I take, take. I want to take here to try to deflect. But that's, that's not clear, because if here, he might be able to play this. Yeah, probably that's the thing to do. G4 and just try to get an F5 as soon as possible. Wasn't there Queen F6 forking the rooks in the end? Uh, you mean in that line that I was looking at with Bishop takes E6? I don't think so. Check here. I don't think he has time because I'm always taking on d1 with check or you know if he takes here my queen comes back and does a good job of defending okay let's check some games here Indian lad versus Grishuk that looks over how about Parhamov oh you withdrew Eric he says I decided I would much rather withdraw eat fries and watch John Bartholomew, instead of continually blundering in the tournament. Yeah, I can I can sympathize, man. It's a rough one out there. These arenas, they they have a tendency to go pear-shaped easily. If you're not in four on, on a given day, people will strike, take advantage. So no shame in withdrawing. Okay, Parhamov is totally winning here. King e7. Rook a7, he can block with the knight. Okay, black's going to try this. But yeah, this feels very much winning for white. Well, okay, rook f1. I've been under underestimating counterplay in some of the games today, so maybe this is a case where I underestimated a resource. That's pretty annoying. The rook takes f2 threat. Probably king g8 here. And king g6 is going forward. I don't like king g6 because now he's susceptible to checks from the knight. Yeah, I think that was him. Oh, now he's going to get... He's going to run into rook h5. Or an improvement. Mating net. Hmm. Yeah, black had to play king g8 there, I think. Um, This move. Maybe white can still win this somehow, but... Grishik's on 7 out of 7? What a beast. I don't recall Grishik having played Title Tuesday before. He probably has, but just waltzes in here. 7 out of 7, no big deal. Still three rounds to go, though. Hey, 33M, what's up with you? X33M. Tom Walker, thanks for the thousand bits. Says, okay, got to give the big props. Yesterday was amazing and doing great today too. Yeah, thanks, Tom. 
longtime viewer on both YouTube and Twitch. Appreciate your support. Yeah, glad that we uh, recovered from kind of a rocky start. I mean, still plenty, plenty of rounds to go here, but that draw I had in round four against Kumi from the totally winning position was pretty brutal. <laughs> but then I got some luck back. You know, I I had that victory against Risky Decision where he allowed me checkmate in three or checkmate in one three times. Should we take a look at Agent JL's game? Agent JL is a streamer. I think he's from Michigan, I want to say. And he's trying to win this. But I don't think he'll be able to succeed against this IM because white is just so ready to sacrifice the bishop for that pawn if it ever advances to e3. And really, the only way to interfere with that is to put your knight here or here. But then white can take it, and if their king is in front of the pawn, they'll just make a draw. So hard to see how he's going to conjure anything up here, but he's he's going to try. I mean, you hope for a fork in these situations, but not too likely. The bishop can stay very far away. So I got third yesterday in the Arena Kings, but I might have got second as far as streamers go. Hikaru got first, and then there was an untitled player who got second, who was rated, I think, around 2,600, but I don't think they were streaming. So second or third. I benefited from some nice pairings. In fact, the only Grandmaster I played yesterday was Alexander Kostinyak. I played her twice. So I avoided some of the big guns, like Arabic Falcon and Hikaru and guys like that. Yeah, so that's what happened. Black put the knight on d4. There was a trade and drawn king and pawn endgame. All right. Was that the last game of the round? Unless this one's still going. Oh, another Rook and Bishop against Rook. Here we have it. Another case where Black has to display accuracy. Okay, now you want to check here with the Rook. Rook d7. Yep. Okay. Hmm... Okay, white's going to come around here, and if check, he's going to play bishop d5. Now black's going to play this, so he can block. I think this is the winning position. Yeah, check. Uh, now he's going to get out this way, though, if you're not careful. They're also on move 145, so i got to believe they're very close to the draw. Okay, king here. Oh, he's going that direction. Okay. Yeah, I did have a 12 game winning streak yesterday. That was pretty nice. Yeah, these guys are definitely over 50 moves. I think black is. Not clicking draw. Okay, there we have it. So, trying to see the updated standings. I am Dimitri is next. Who is apparently GM Dimitri. There you have Grishuk on 7 out of 7. He's probably playing Parhamov who's on 6.5. So I'm on five. Good score here, guys. This is a good opportunity to keep pumping it up. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to play it like this. We'll probably support with C6. I'm going to play it like a gambit. I actually don't mind playing these positions from time to time. Let's play knight here. They're kind of fun. OK, 
Okay, now bishop f3 or knight e4. Knight e4 right away, probably not so appealing. Let's play castles before doing anything. And now bishop f3. Mm -hmm. So if I take, he's probably going to take with the A pawn, I think he's saying. So let's just play queen c2. Hey, Suzumas. Hey, Johnny DJ. Not quite the Bovenik variation, because black had his bishop on b4. Yeah, I'm playing some aggressive uh, chess here, looking for compensation. Thinking about knight e4, thinking about b3. Let's play b3. I'm trying for a bind on the queen side, but I have a feeling black's going to look to sneak in c5. But I might be able to weaken black's queen side in the end. That's what I'm kind of thinking here. Give c5, take, take, and if there's mass trades, take on f6 at the end. Black will still be up a pawn, but okay, so he's going to try to keep this bind. Certainly possible. So maybe now knight e4 or takes a knight e4. Also, a5 is in the air. Let me think how I want to do this. I'm going to take and then play knight e4, I think. Do I want to throw an a5? That's just a key question here. Now, let's not throw an a5. I'm trying to blockade c5. I'm trying to stop him from playing that. So now he can't play c5 because he drops the bishop. Okay, queen there, or rook there. Mm-hmm. Okay, queen a7, queen e5, I'm thinking. Attack this. I really want that. Or maybe this next. The squeeze. Going for the squeeze. You guys are not fans of my position. Hey, Hobbin. Hmm. So he's looking for bishop d6, huh? Well, let's do this first. Still looking to sink the knight in, if possible. Wow, can I just take that? I can, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the bind. 
Because if I take, he's going to play rook c8. It kind of liberates this bishop in the end. So I'm going to more so play for the bind and maybe start playing on the queen side, especially with the time situation. I think this is better. Okay, let's bring this back. Mm, I might end up having to take on c6. I don't know. We shall find out. All right, you convince me. Rook c8, maybe queen f3. This I should take, but I like queen f3 better. Keep control. Don't know who's better here. I like my position, though, still. I gotta say. Maybe get ready to double? take. If he takes my queen, I take with check, and I win his bishop at the end. Or maybe not, but... Hmm. Okay, I'm going to bring the king over now. This bishop looks awkward. Bring the king up. Oh, he didn't check. Wow. I totally thought he checked. Yikes. Man, oh man. Don't like this, what I did here. I just hallucinated. I thought he gave a check when he didn't. All right, I have to do my best impression of what my previous opponent did to me. Okay, I might win this. Uh, maybe not. Yikes. That's coming pretty fast. I should have tried 98 there. That would have been a better attempt. Well, got to try something here. Ooh, did he blunder? Knight f5 check? Um... Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hopeless. Not much to do. Yeah. Resign. Hmm. Had a good end game, but blew it. 
just a total mental disconnect. I thought here he checked and played rook a3. I don't know why I was thinking he did that. I just instinctively played king e4. But, yeah. I should probably in this position play check myself. After that, I might have had a few chances. I mean, I'm down one pawn, but I have some annoying threats around his king. He played quite well, though. I thought for a second I might be able to win f7, but that didn't pan out because he had rook f2. He kept my counterplay under control. Yeah, here I should have tried knight e8, but it, it wasn't probably going to work out. The middle game was all right, though. Yeah, I think I'm a little bit better around here. The send game. Maybe here I should play... I could play knight c5 right away. Take and then take with a pawn. This king might come over. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe maybe this immediately. And even here, it felt like I had some chances, like bishop d2 didn't really accomplish anything. Perhaps rook here is better. That looks like a better way to try to win. Oh, they can play bishop a5 then. I kept the rooks on the board as opposed to trading them earlier because it seemed like I had better chances that way. All right. Um, so what's going on here? Rasmus Fane. Game drawn. Stewie Griffin, another streamer. He's in a queen end game. Looks like a draw. Mr. King says, how about taking on a6 with rook, considering knights are tricky to deal with under time pressure? Yeah, so that's what I was saying with the rook trade. I thought that my rook and knight would coordinate better than his rook and bishop, since he was more passive. I didn't see how Grishuk did, but let's take a look. Um, now I'm not sure if I can get to that game. Nor do I know what the result is. Anybody know how he played or how he did? I got a tournament coming up in a week and a half, Siege. Just a local tournament, though. Grishik's on 8 out of 8. Wow. <laughs> Unreal. Two games left in this thing. So did Grishuk just beat Parhamov? Hello, Hop in the DeLorean. Black's defending this kind of strangely. But <laughs> I know I've done very suspicious things in games where it looked like uh, the draw was easy. Like, for one thing, I just don't understand why Black didn't go forward with their king. Like, right here. King g5. And attack the pawn. That looks like a very, very easy draw. Even still, it doesn't look like white's going to be able to force a queen trade where they get opposition. How do you get in this event? I am titled, and when I try to contact chess.com, they never contact me back. Yeah, you got to be titled to play, so I I don't know. I can't speak to, to that. In my experience, chess.com has been um, very on the spot. But if you want, Evlove, send me, send me a uh, whisper on Twitch, and I'll see if I can pass along your information. Maybe I can get you helped faster. Okay, I don't think Black's going to blow this. Could have tried King E7 like Astana. <laughs> 
So, round nine coming up. Playing Donchenko. All right, Alexander Donchenko. I'm on five out of eight. Thanks, Tom. Hmm. All right, I'll play a um, Benoni if Black wants. I play this variation from time to time. Uh, how about to play it? Let's go here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's play Bishop H2. And now maybe Rook A2. Uh, no, Rook A2, I've ran into this tactic before where Black takes twice on D5 and then plays Bishop E6. i got to keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely fallen victim to that. So therefore, what to play in this position? Hmm. I'm actually not sure. Rook B1? Rook B1 feels kind of wrong, but... Could play knight d2. Knight d2, rook takes b2, knight c4. Yeah, let's try that. That seems to be the only decent attempt to get counterplay here. Try to get this knight here. He might take this, knight c4, and then try for something active. But if I win d6, it's going to get messy. And probably in a good way for me. Yeah, b3 doesn't seem wise because of the knight here being so loose. You guys like Messi? Yeah, you might. I usually don't. <laughs> well, at least he's going to the tank here. He's letting me catch up on the clock. All right, so how does that interfere with knight c4? I don't get it. Okay, he's just going to defend. Fair. Hmm. Okay, let's develop. Hmm. Okay, gonna go here. He can try bishop b7, but... I have some knight a5 ideas in reserve. I don't want to play knight a5 yet, though. I kind of like my knight here. Keeps him tied down to that. Okay, he's going to try that. Maybe I can go here. If takes, then bishop f3. 
Let's try it. Seems like he's got a second exchange now. Yes, he will. Thinking about queen c3 here. Nah, that's that's too fancy under the circumstances. Just take. Okay, looking for e4. If he takes, I take d5. Not sure what's happening there. This looks good. Just take. Pin, king here, I have check. All right, guys. Oh, I blundered that, but okay. This is still winning. Change plus pawn. I feel like the easiest way to win this is just go after H4. This is protected. Go to d7 next.
Not going to be any Fortress Dry here, so I don't think. Okay. He's going to test me on my king and rook first king technique. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, my customary time pressure was kicking in, but I think it worked out pretty nicely. I mean, e4 was an important move, I feel. Main point being if he takes here, I take here, and I think he has a hard time defending these, both of these guys. And the knight is doing a brilliant job of preventing queen e3 check. Yeah, and then later I blundered rook takes c5, but, you know, that made the task actually pretty straightforward because I was just up in exchange plus a pawn. All right, yeah, feel pretty good about that one. Uh, let's see what games are in progress. Let's watch Gatikomsky. He's always interesting to watch. Looks like he's going to get around back and attack these pawns. Yeah, that knight is not going to be able to stop that. Uh... Hmm. Although I don't know why not just take there. That seems like an odd decision. Okay, but this this should be winning. Yep, knight's boxed out. King a2 or king c3. Keep the king two squares away diagonally from the knight. Polish fighter lost to Grishuk. Grishuk, 9 out of 9. Wow. You could just only marvel at that. So what about Sebastian? Ooh, this looks like a winning pawn end game for white. Yeah, he's going to have the protected pass pawn with the king coming up. No matter which way he takes, really. Hmm. That's checkmate. Or not really, but winning. This pawn will promote. Wow. So white in this game gets to seven. Seven out of nine. That's a very strong score. What am I on? I think I'm on six, right? I think I'm on six points. Thanks, true test. Time controls three plus two. Oh, is Grishuk streaming this? Wow, didn't know he was streaming this too. Hey, Flo Kash. Yeah, here's the leaderboard. It's not updated though. For some reason, it's not updating mid round. It usually does. Okay, Grishuk is not streaming. Well, you made it sound like he was streaming, Tom. <laughs> Uh, what other games are left here? Just one. This looks like a draw. White's trying to squeeze something here, but you got to win this pawn to win this, and I don't think that's going to happen. Bishop b5 now. Stop the king from coming over. Just in case white gets to do this. King all the way over to f6. Even then, it's probably a draw. Black could put the bishop on d7. I'm not playing in the PCL tomorrow, no. I'm out of the lineup. But I'll probably be back in pretty soon. All right, and the last game, Klein Beer, 98. Klein the Beer. What a good way to go out in the tournament. A little scanty for the road, huh? I'm going to play the non-critical variation. 
because it's easier to play in Blitz. You don't have to remember as much theory. And I've been getting in massive time pressure, as usual, this tournament. Ah, but he plays Knight C3. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll try to keep my queen active. Usually if they play this way, they're trying to go d4, c4, and only then knight c3. So, a little curious that he does that. But it is possible. Okay, now I always hope that they blunder b4, bishop takes b4, but they tend not to do that. <laughs> These guys are pretty good. Nines on fours, you got here for the final round. Round 10. How's Simon doing? Has he stayed up there in the standings? Don't see his name. It's so tough. I mean, he lost to Grishuk and he probably got paired against MVL or someone. <laughs> That's how it goes in this tournament. Uh, I think about h6 here. Also rook c8 maybe. Let's just play h6. Simon's also on 6 out of 9. Okay. Okay, now I think I'm going to switch the bishop here. A5, maybe? Or just knight d5? Knight d5 looks all right. Let's do that. Is Amon playing this tournament? I haven't seen Amon in the mix, but I thought he had mentioned that he was going to play today. Okay, he goes back. So he's looking for C4, clearly. Let's uh, let's put a stop to that, or at least be able to trade if he plays it. It's double-edged. You can't play a4 because this pawn hangs. Okay. Hmm. So maybe now a5. Try to weaken the structure. Okay, let's take. And now I don't want to give up the files, so let's let's go here. Niels went. Thanks for the thousand bits. Says let's distract John and hope he flags. Just kidding. Keep up the great work. <laughs> Thanks, Niels. I'll distract myself. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you want some night maneuvering? That's probably a good move. Okay, I'll take. Maybe here? I don't know. Let's go here. I'm trying to take over the file. Maybe rook a6 was a little bit better. I'm not sure. If I took it to queen, he had knight takes c6. Didn't like that. So we both have weaknesses here. He has a more active knight. Uh, let's... Let's go here. I'm not sure what he's up to, but I'm going to try to play this and then maybe rook a3. 
Could try knight takes c3 here. It's interesting. Very interesting, actually. You know what? Final round, let's give it a shot. It's gonna be an imbalance position. I get a lot of pawns for my trouble. Oh, that's not a move I anticipated. Is he going to mate me, though? I don't know. We got to try, though. Hmm. <laughs> Queen f3. Yikes. All right. Well, I got to do this, I think. I'll let him take e6 with check. I guess I kind of have to. It's an interesting question whether he can win this. He could maybe play knight f7 here. This is interesting. It opens up a lot of tactics like take or bishop e5. Knight takes c6, also interesting. Also challenging. Ah, he's going to pivot back and take the bishop. Annoying. Ah, but okay. I can still stay on his knight. I think I spotted something here. I think I spotted a little tactic. Okay, take. Uh, queen f4, he takes. I don't know. I'm trying to stop his pawn. Ah, you can just do that. E. You can just push now. Ah, man. I let that get too far. Mm. Annoying. Yeah, that's losing. I'll try to play it out, but I blew that. It was a nice tactic too, but I still blew it. <laughs> and I takes h6. Queen e7. Looking for some stalemate trap, but I don't think there's going to be a, anyone apparent here. Yeah, let's resign. Ugh, gross ending to that. Found a good move with bishop takes f2. That d pawn, though, what, what do I do about that? I can't take it because of knight e7. I just kind of panicked here. I wanted to go queen f4, but queen f4, he takes... Or you can even push right away, I guess. Take. Take here. And I have to give it my rook. I think. To stop that pawn. Maybe then my pawn just runs, though. Ah, maybe I can do this. He can't get back in time. Right? 
I don't think he can. Ah, knight c sixty seven. Yeah, good point. Does get back in time. Ye. I'm not sure what the right play is here. I mean, actually, I probably should not take the bishop. Maybe I should play rook a1 right away. And try to threaten some bishop g1 business. But even then, that's not also not clear. I mean, taking the bishop is not a move you're probably going to shy away from in time pressure. Yeah, king h7 is just a bad move. I just didn't know what to do here. I was trying to threaten queen takes d5. If anything, I should play king h8. I don't know why I went to f to h7. Yeah, I think after this, I'm just busted. Hey, MD Knights. Um, should we put Grishik's game up? He drew. They had a GM draw, 16 moves. Genghis K must have got some prize money for a draw with nine points. Decided not to push for the win. Leon Beast. MVL drew. So he got to eight and a half, it looks like. Good tournament for this player. He made it to nine. Yeah, I could try... Here, let me pull that game up since you guys were talking about that. Could go to f7, but I think the pawn still runs through. So in this position, queen f4. And the other complicating thing is he doesn't have to take. He could push right away. Okay, and there you have it. Uh, the final standings. Grishuk, brilliant performance, 9.5 out of 10. Clear first place over Genghis K, who could have tried to catch him, but you know he probably just wanted the prize money. Just decided to lock it in with black against Grishuk. Um, and then Leo, that I am, eight and a half, gets the third place. So not a bad performance from me, six out of ten. You know, any any positive score is a good score here. So yeah, I could play rook f7 here, but he has knight e5. But maybe now I play b4, huh? That might be winning. Yeah, that that's probably just winning. D7, take, take, here. And now White's Knight can't get to this square with check to get back. But also, like I said, there's this complicating factor, like White could play D6 here. And then take, take, we have this position. <laughs> the annoying thing is I can't approach with my king. So what would be correct here? This, probably rook a8, or b4 first. b4 here, here. Queen, take, take, and again the pawn runs. Yeah. Then I do win. This line, white's not quite in time. So it seems I, I missed an opportunity there at the end, but time, time pressure. Yeah, Eric is in Portugal. I thought Amon might be playing, but I guess not. Okay. Well, Title Tuesday, always challenging and fun. Nonetheless, put in a positive score, some wild games back and forth. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all for the support. Thanks to all the bit donations. Uh, Tom Walker with the 500 bits at the end says, Okay, six points is amazing. Yeah, thanks to everyone who subscribed, donated, watched today. I will put this up on YouTube ASAP. So thanks, guys. All right. Enjoy, everyone. Have a good night or a good day. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.